Having built the model, I now have an integrated model of credit creation and fiat money creation, and I now want to show the impact of various policies, starting first of all, of course, of running a government deficit. And what does that government deficit do? It does precisely what MMT argues it does. It increases the private sector's equity. As the government goes into negative equity, now not, not only is it, give, is it running a deficit, it's going to negative equity over time. If we take a look at the, uh, the Treasury, which is the main source, of the, the, the uh, place in which this negative equity occurs in this model, uh, it's going down uh, as it spends more than it takes back in taxation, sells bonds to cover the difference to the banking sector, pays interest on those bonds, borrows from the central bank to pay that interest, pays interest to the central bank on the bonds that it has uh, uh, sold to them, or the, rather the central bank has bought off them using open market operations and gets dividends back, it goes into negative equity. Now that negative equity of the, of the, uh, of the, the government sector is precisely equal to the positive equity, pardon me, the positive equity of the non-government sector. And the reason, the particularly strong reason that matters is that because banks must be in positive equity, then the rest of the economy, including in this case the government as well as the private non-bank sector, is necessarily an equivalent negative equity. Now, the government itself it's paranoid about this for no good reason. But the private sector gets validly paranoid about it because they, they are, as currency users rather than issuers, they can't do anything about being in negative equity. But nonetheless, the impact over time of the government running a deficit is that it issues bonds to cover that deficit as required by most government uh, policies and therefore gets what looks like a rising level of government debt. Now, at the same time, I'd have no private sector borrowing going on here. The rather, private sector borrowing is equivalent to the rate at which loans are repaid, so there's no increase in net, net private debt. But you have a, a, the rising level of uh, government debt goes with the rising GDP, rising money supply, rising private sector positive equity. Now, of course, we have members of the government who believe the government should never run a deficit or should run uh, a balanced budget over time and therefore would now need to run a surplus. So we now bring a surplus in and what happens? Yes, the paying off the government debt reduces the government debt level, bonds are falling, but so is GDP. The money supply is now stagnant. The only reason it's not falling right now as it happens is that the by paying interest on bonds to the private banks a substantial amount of positive equity has been created in terms of bank reserves and that takes time to deplete and for a while the payment of interest actually continues increasing the uh, amount of money in the uh, bank's assets which t occurs over here and increases the equity of the, the, banking, the uh, private economy as well. So it takes a while for the negative impact of the surplus running to turn up in its impact on GDP, but it does get there and you have a declining level of output. Now, the last time this was done on a grand scale, running a, a surplus of about 1% of GDP, was under Calvert Coolidge in the 1920s. And of course the 1920s were a period of boom, and Coolidge took credit for that and believed the surplus was actually causing the boom. What it was actually causing the do, the, the causing was the private sector facing declining equity because of the government surplus went off in a borrowing spree, borrowing from the banks and speculating on Wall Street. And we re associate 1920s with all the excesses of the stock market bubble. It really was financed by borrowing from private banks, and I'll go into detail that in a later survey. So why did the Coolidge Kul see a rising GDP uh, when this government was running a surplus? It's because of the level of borrowing from private banks. So I'll add that in now, and you now have uh, the private non-bank sector borrowing from private banks and in this model that money gets used productively which is better than what happened in the 1920s. What actually happens as a result is the equ the equity of the um, non-government uh, uh, economy continues to fall. 
the non bank non government falls even faster the debt level rises and as we know of course in the 1930s when the roaring 20s came to an end there was a plunge in uh, private se private sector borrowing the debt ratio rose because GDP collapsed even faster but if I now show that and have a much more rapid repayment of debt and much lower lending while the surplus is being run then bang we see the sort of decline we saw in GDP during the Great Depression now of course this uh, I've, I've got a very artificial situation here in that the government can independently control both its surplus and its, uh, its spending and its taxes. Of course it doesn't have that luxury. Uh, but what actually happened courtesy of, of that during the 1930s was the government went back into running a deficit again. Not a big enough deficit, but that deficit then reversed the impact of the private sector deleveraging. And you can see all these effects turning up here. Now, just to stop and take, uh, to take account of what's going on here, um, you can see the, what the government does causes a reverse experience for the private sector. And by focusing just upon the government deficit and arguing that's what we should uh, bring under control, they don't realise they're actually causing a private sector um, deficit as well which leads to a decline in economic activity if the private sector does nothing about uh, any further borrowing itself and leads to an asset bubble and then probably a, a financial crash afterwards if the private sector goes off and borrows as I've illustrated here in this model. So you have to think about the government behaviour in an integrated fashion and given the fact that the non-bank, non-government sector of the economy starts in negative equity and will always be in negative equity without a government sector running a deficit, the standard situation should be that the government runs a deficit which creates the money that enables the private sector to undertake commerce.